Hello, this is James Photography and this video is not sponsored by Squarespace and you will not get 10% off if you quote my name. So, I do use Squarespace but I'm not sponsored by them, but um, it's a good website. Um, this video is about bridge cameras, okay, now this is a very, very old bridge camera but it's the only one that I've got and I've kept this for nostalgic reasons. Uh, quick story, I went to South America years ago, about 10 years ago I think. And I just quickly, before I went to the airport, about a day before I quit, I went to Dixon's, or Curry's, can't remember, and bought this. Um, I just saw it, it was an offer, it looked like a DSLR, and I thought that'll do. And it did me well, it's a Fuji, so the colour's alright, I just shot an automatic. Um, and it took some not bad pictures. Um, but as soon as it got dark, or night time, or evening, indoors, they were all blurry, absolutely rubbish. Um, and I kind of regretted that really, because I went to some amazing places in South America, but I brought a bridge camera. Now, bridge cameras now are a lot better than this one. Um, they can be quite expensive and they're quite powerful. But I'm not running bridge cameras down in this video at all, because they have their place, but I'm just sort of saying beware the bridge camera if you're thinking you're getting something that you're not really, because they can be quite limited in a few different ways. Now I'm not making this up, I'm doing this video because two people recently have brought bridge cameras and they've started to learn photography. They've actually, some of them have joined photography clubs, they've gone on courses and they've taken their bridge camera and they've sort of hit a wall. They're like, oh, I can't get these sort of shots that I'm after. And it's because of the limitations of a bridge camera. So I'm just using this one as an example because it's, um, it is a bridge camera, it's old. Now a bridge camera actually means it's sort of in between, I don't actually know actually, it's not a DSLR. It is like a mirrorless sort of digital type thing. It's like a bridge between something less, I can't remember what, and a sort of bigger camera. I think that's why they call it bridge camera. I don't know all the specs technically. Um, I did buy one myself years ago because I got all these free vouchers um, for Tesco's and I saw this tremendous bridge camera on offer. I thought, oh, I'll get that. It had this ridiculous zoom on it. You could zoom up to the moon and everything. So it was great fun, but I soon realized with that camera there were limitations on it. And I found out that the sensor size in it wasn't much bigger than my mobile phone. I think it was actually smaller at the time when I did a bit of research. So um, yeah, I'm gonna talk about bridge cameras and just be aware of them as to why. Now, the big thing with bridge cameras for me, one of them, um, is because some of them look massive. The one that I had uh, for a little while that I got with vouchers was huge. Like the lens element was like that. It was massive and chunky and it looked like a great big DSLR. It really did. And I think some people can be fooled by that a little bit. It does look like a big DSLR. And you're thinking, great, it's a professional looking camera. And that's really what it is, a professional looking camera, but it's what's inside that counts. Um, the sensor size on those cameras are a lot, lot smaller than a DSLR, even a crop sensor DSLR. They're an awful lot smaller. And I don't, you know, I haven't really researched all the specs, but I remember the Fuji one that I had um, about five years ago. And the sensor size was the same size as a mobile phone. So basically what you're getting is a mobile phone with a zoom lens on it. I don't know what they're like now, but judging by the two friends, uh, the people that I know that have got bridge cameras and I've had to play around with them, straight away I can see the limitations and they are sort of saying, I can't do this and I can't do that with this bridge camera. So the sensors, and it's not about the sensor size, it's about the megapixels on the sensor. That's the, that's the issue here. The megapixels are gonna be very, very small, like a mobile phone, whereas on a, a DSLR, even an older one or a crop sensor one, the megapixels are huge, and that's what makes the difference. They gather more light, more detail, more information. You're gonna get a better image and a more powerful image, especially when it comes to low light. Um, and that's the issue with megapixels, and they are smaller on a bridge camera. Another thing I don't like about bridge cameras is, the um, lenses are fixed <clears throat> on them and they're usually a zoom. Now some of them have got super zooms, they're ridiculous, like to a thousand times zoom, which is great fun. So it's good for travel, it's good for general photography. If you're happy with the kind of photography you can get with your mobile phone and automatic and you want to zoom, get a bridge camera, absolutely, because it is, it's the same sort of thing, but you can zoom with it. So you can go wide to zoom, it's great. Um, they are electric. So every time you zoom, it's like zzz, it's draining the batteries and zzz, and it's not going to be as quick as like a, a, a manual zoom. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, the thing about the zooms is it's stuck on the camera. You can't change it. So you can't start ch chopping and changing lenses. Now I'm going to get into this. It doesn't have to cost a fortune to do that, to swap lenses, to get really, really good professional images, okay? 
Um, and also with the lenses that are fixed on a bridge camera, it's gonna be variable aperture. Now, if you don't know what that is, backtrack on some of my videos and look for the one that says, what is variable aperture? And I explain that basically aperture, the wider it is, the more light it's gonna let in. So it's not gonna push the camera, it's not gonna push the ISO and things like that. But as you start to zoom, the aperture starts to shrink massively and it's gonna let less light in. So then, you know, if you want a faster shutter speed, if you wanna let more light in, raise the ISO, it's gonna cause a bit of trouble if your sensor isn't up for the task. And like I said, the sensors are a bit smaller. So when it comes to high ISO images, they're gonna to start to degrade pretty quick other than a DSLR. Um, yeah, and a lot of these new bridge cameras, like the one my friend's got, it's got all the bells and whistles on the world on it. It's got Bluetooth, SatNav, whatever, I don't know, not SatNav, uh, GPS, face recognition, focus peaking, all these glorious gadgets all over it. But the heart of it, the sensor of it, is actually quite small. And he's limited with the lens that's stuck on it. And he actually wants to um, advance his photography. I took him out a while ago. I took an older camera with me and it, you know, I, I wasn't showing off, but it absolutely smoked his camera. And he was like, how much was that camera? And I said, not a great deal. And um, yeah, so he's gonna get a proper DSLR and start getting some different, different lenses. So if you just want a point and shoot with a zoom for general photography like you do with your mobile phone, bridge cameras are great, they really, really are. But if you wanna do proper photography and you wanna start controlling the camera and perhaps swapping some lenses for different effects, then you're gonna be stuck with a bridge camera. So I'm not slating them at all, I'm just saying if you wanna do, start learning photography properly, I wouldn't recommend getting a bridge camera. Now, do you need to spend an absolute fortune to start learning photography properly? Do you have to start buying full frame cameras and really expensive lenses? No, you don't. I have got full frame cameras and some pretty good lenses which I use professionally, like for weddings and for, for commercial and corporate. And the reason I've got that power of those cameras is because I actually need it. I didn't buy it to show off or like, oh, I want the biggest and the best. It's not, it's not the best at all, but it's got the power that I need, especially for weddings and low light situations and the autofocus and things like that. But I'm gonna run through some older cameras. Now here's one I bought a while ago. This is, this is the first one, where is it? So like my friend bought a bridge camera, which is costing about 550 pounds, right? And I went along with this old thing and it smoked it, absolutely smoked it. This is a Nikon D7000. They're worth about 200 pounds now if you shop around, okay? This one's a little bit beaten up, so I got it even cheaper. I got it for 140 pounds, I can't believe it. This is a Nikon D7000, it's a crop sensor. So the sensor on it, uh, that's the mirror in there, but it sort of shows the size of the sensor. The sensor on it, compared to a bridge camera, is absolutely huge and therefore so are the megapixels. You can push the ISO higher, the dynamic range higher for editing, the autofocus is better, and this has got two memory card slots as well. So I would, I would use this for an important job if I had to. Um, I always take it as backup to my two full frame cameras, and if one of them decided to pack up, I would use this. I can put triggers on it, speed lights, I could shoot professionally with this all day long. It's not as powerful as my full frames, but it could certainly get me out of trouble, and I could certainly shoot professionally with this camera. And this you can get for about 200 to 250 pounds now. And there's Canon equivalents and so on and so on. The lens on it is 100 pounds. I've done a video on this lens before. It's the uh, 35mm 1.8 DX. This cost me 95 pounds. I use this on my full frame cameras. It's so good. The images are so good. Plus you get that really wide aperture 1.8. So if you wanna start getting those professional portrait type images or just letting in a lot of light, this lens is incredible, um, and I do shoot professionally with this lens, and it didn't cost a great deal, 95 pounds. So this setup here is about 300 pounds, okay? And you've got an incredible camera. And I haven't tested the latest bridge cameras, fair enough, but I, I would put money on it that this old D7000 with this lens, which costs 95 pounds, would smoke any bridge camera any day of the week, okay? So this wasn't a great deal of money, and if you wanna learn photography with this, it's ideal. Um, and I would shoot professionally with this. We take this on holidays and everything, so I can still get great shots with it. Um, and it's like a backup camera too. So not a great deal of money. Now I'm gonna go a step further than that. <laughs> this I bought years ago, <laughs> it's another Nikon. Okay, now this is a crop sensor too. So it's got the same size sensor as that one, the D7000 and it's half the size of a full frame sensor. This is only six megapixels. Uh, the D7000 is 24, so you can get like 
bigger images if you want and everything, but six megapixel, D70. Now I wouldn't use this one at a wedding purely because the autofocus is a bit slow um, in low light. I wouldn't trust it in low light, but um, <laughs> this thing cost me, ready, 35 pounds. Okay, it's worth about 50, but it needed a sensor clean and I bought it to practice doing sensor cleans on it before I started doing my other camera. So I thought if I muck this one up, it doesn't really matter. But we've been using this one. My wife takes this on holiday. It's, uh, it's only six meg megapixels, so the memory card never fills up. The battery just seems to last forever. It's indestructible, this thing. It's like a brick and it costs 35 pounds. Now with a prime lens on it like this one, this lens costs six, 60 pound. It's an old D series prime lens, 50 mil. So for portrait work, this is a 75 mil on this. And you can get equivalent ones like this. So this whole setup here is less than 100 pounds. And I would still choose this over any bridge camera that looked all big and chunky with GPS and everything like that. This old cronky DSLR, which cost nothing, you could still shoot professional images with this. And you could learn as well. You've got the aperture, the shutter speed, you can control it manually. You've got histogram on the back and everything, which you have on the bridge cameras as well. But this, big fat megapixels on a crop sensor, we've got some amazing images from this camera, believe it or not, and it's less than 100 pound. So that's the difference. If you wanna learn photography and start getting like perhaps more professional images, you can get great images with the bridge camera, you really can, but you're gonna hit a wall. You're gonna get to a point where I wanna put a prime lens on, I want, I want a quicker zoom, I want a quicker this, I want better ISO, I want a better shallow depth of field. Um, and you, I, I want better dynamic range in the editing and you're gonna hit a wall with bridge cameras. But like I said, if you just want one, like a, a glorified mobile phone with a big zoom on it, then great, that, that's what they're for. And brilliant, they're getting better and better and better. But bear in mind what's inside of it. So it's like, it's like buying a, a kit car that looks like a Porsche 911 Turbo. You think, great, fantastic. And inside is a little mini engine, okay? <laughs> you say, well, it, do, it looks like a Porsche, but it doesn't go like one. That's the same sort of thing. Whereas this is like an old Porsche 911, uh, certainly this one, certainly this one here, the D7000, or anything equivalent to that. Um, this is like a very, very powerful camera for not a lot of money, okay? So it depends what you want to do. Bridge cameras have their place, but if you want to learn photography and get better and better at it and start, you don't have to go and buy expensive full frame cameras and really expensive lenses, you don't. The two lenses on these were peanuts, really. This setup here, this setup here, with this lens or anything equivalent to it, you, you'll be on your way, really getting those amazing images. And you have to edit as well, bear that in mind. Shooting raw, learn how to use Lightroom and Photoshop and just start editing, bringing out the shadows, bringing out the colors, and that's where you'll get those amazing images as well. So beware the bridge camera, I'm not slating them, just it depends what you want to do with them, okay? So I hope this helps. <laughs> Thanks.